So his days could be numbered and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later on in the video. But today we're going to be doing some long-term food storage and a little bit of vlogging. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. If you do, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video. Gabby, Crazy, get back. Okay. So... We have the barred rocks. I can't remember what those other ones called. We got a Rhode Island Reds and a little bit of barnyard mix through there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tucker. Tucker, did he chase you guys earlier? He didn't chase us. He was just making a weird sound. Well, this morning, he came at me like no other. It's every day. Buddy Kevin, the neighbor, he came over to get a chainsaw. I, I can hear him chainsaw in the background. Um, and I said, Kevin, I want to show him the new chicken coop. I said, come check out this coop, but be, be aware of Bobby. He will attack us. And he never did. So I'm like, that's no, good. Tucker will attack us. Or, no, did I say Bobby? Yeah. Tucker will attack us. And he never did. But Bobby, I said, watch this. I start yelling for Bobby. Bobby come running across the yard just in case. I'm telling you, Bobby just protects like no other. It's, I never see anything like it. Um, but right now, Tucker's behaving. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is going to be a little bit maybe of educational. Some of you all probably already know how to do this. Hope's never done this with me before. We've only done it once, um, but we're going to be preserving eggs long term. Eggs, chicken eggs, long term. We got an abundance of eggs starting to come. Spring's coming. Eggs are laying more. The daylight's longer, so they're they're producing more eggs for us. And and um, we want to preserve some of these for the winter and long term food storage. So we're gonna be showing you guys that today. But also we're gonna be vlogging a little bit. So stay tuned. Right now. Um, we got. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna let Hopi show you a new rooster we got. Randy the carpenter brought over a rooster that matches the barred rocks. And uh, Randy said this rooster was really mean fighting his roosters. I have not seen that at all. I told him I say my two mature roosters will put him in his place really quick. And so far, we've had no trouble out of this rooster. I accidentally let the rooster out. Yeah, we had. I had it in there because I was gonna put it in there at night, and I hope let her out, let him out on accident. Because I and thought then, it was a chicken. Yeah, you didn't know. I didn't tell you yet. And uh, we found him roosting. But here are a couple of the barred rocks right there and there's the new rooster over here i don't know if they've named you i probably haven't named them yet let's name him we'll think about it not oreo because we already have a cat we'll we'll think about him now he's just kind of running over there he goes that's left the... that's leftover metal from the chicken coop we're gonna he have to goes move in there he goes in is there is he going in there now yeah. good so he's getting along with them he's a little bit younger of a rooster so see, now, if you, see if you can film them And now we have me. Jack, Randy, and Tim. Mm -hmm. Whatever his name is. Yes. Where? I'll run him toward you a little bit. Okay. Just so they can see him. He's right here. He don't know what to do. He's a good looking barred rock uh, rooster. He looks just like a barred rock. <laughs> He's kind of shy. Isn't he? <laughs> He's not like the other ones yet. So if we ever wanted to hatch just barred rocks, we would put him up with our barred rocks. Right now they all just barnyard mix, they all run together, free range and all that. And um, I, so we have two mature roosters with 45 hens. I think we need three, I, think, I thought we needed three roosters to service all the hens. If we ever do want to start hatching, we'll make sure all the eggs are fertile. So I think three will be uh, sufficient for the 45 hens. I think realistically one rooster can probably breed 10 to 15 uh, chickens to be safe and maybe more but i think that's about where we're at you got a splinter in your toe I just cut it out. okay so right now we're going to check the eggs and um we probably won't water glass these ones but we might um so let's go show them how many eggs we got yeah i grace you got an egg this morning you guys gave them an egg went, no they went in they there. went in there and got one so let's see how many we got so far we've been getting average about 15 a day so They've been adding up. When we eat, probably anywhere from six to eight whenever we do. I see a chicken in here. Not yet. I don't see one in there. Oh, wow. We got abundance of them. Let's count them. There's one right here. Two. Four. That one's warm. They just laid it. Four. Three. Yeah, I see them back there. Six. That one's warm. Six. Eight. You see how clean, how clean they are? These yeah. would be perfect for water glassing. Ten. Twelve. 14, 16, 17. So 17 so far. There might be some back there. Mm -hmm. There might be. Let's, check, let's go check inside the coop just Kay. in case. Here, you can take this in there. Okay. Here. Here, I'll carry this. You got it? There might be some in here. You can check it out. Okay. We left in this box in here just in case, but they haven't been laying in there. Um, 
There's still rust I don't see any. You scared me, Dad. Oh. It almost needs to be cleaned out again. Man, they poop a lot. <laughs> There's none in here. Bobby, I appreciate you and your service that you do for us. Uh, hey, look! quit licking the eggs. No, no, no. You don't lick the eggs. She was licking the eggs. <laughs> don't take them. Don't give them no more. We need to preserve those ones. Hey, Bobby. Bobby. You're an awesome peacock. Yes, um, the other... Huh? Um. <laughs> the other day? Yeah, the other day he was showing off. Was he? He the day. Look at him. Hi. He's like the best guard animal we have. As far, because he's, he's, he's up so high during the evening and stuff, he he alerts us someone's coming down the driveway before the dogs do, unless the dogs are out running around. Like so he peacock. he's a guard peacock to the core, and he gets on Tucker instantly, as soon as Tucker comes after us. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. That one chicken's getting a drink out of there. Oh. Look, he's guarding his ladies. That's Sue's boy, right? Yeah, that's Jack. That's Jack. Ladies, thanks for all the hard work that you do for us, late giving us eggs. Now we're going to show the people how to preserve them. So I have a freeze dryer, so I was going to be freeze drying some also for you guys, but that's going to be another video because the screen, um, I moved it from the creek property here. The screen has messed up on it, and I was on support, uh, the call with support harvest right yesterday, and um, they showed me, told me how to try to fix it. If not, they're going to send me a new screen. So if I don't fix it today, if that doesn't work then next week we'll be freeze drying i really want to do some for you guys today and get some going but we're going to be water glassing and i'll show you guys too we're also going to be doing some long-term food storage as far as uh, rice goes and i'm going to show you guys how i do that i've actually been doing this process for years but during the move we kind of lost track of some of our long-term food storage that i had um, stored since like 2008, but it's okay. We're gonna replenish some of our lost stock um, today. There's a full basket full of eggs. Is there, yeah, that's, that's probably ones we're gonna start off with. Okay, so we're in the pantry. We got everything situated, figured out what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna show Hope how to do this. We've already kind of discussed it, and um, I think you could, you can probably explain it to him now. Mm -hmm. So we got um, pickle jars. Brandy got some from our friend at church. She, they eat a lot of pickles, and they've given us a lot of jars. So we've been saving the jars back for springtime just for this purpose um, that we're going to be starting today there's some down there yeah we got some down here too so brandy's been saving them back here we got all the lime right there so the two three things you need is you need a container which we're using pickle jars and um, farm fresh eggs huh farm fresh eggs. farm fresh eggs and you need pickling lime and i bought this last year at ace hardware i think um so do you remember how we do this hope so we're gonna fill we're gonna fill the water up in here. We'll take this to the sink. Okay. We're gonna fill this up. So what's awesome about this technique? Any of you guys can do this technique. You don't have to have any special gear whatsoever. You don't have to have a harvest right freeze dryer, nothing like that. You just need a container. It don't have to be a jar, but you need a container, lime, and eggs. There you go, water. So that's what we're gonna show you today. So we'll take this in the sink, and you add uh, four cup, well, one quart of water. Mm -hmm. So four cups. So four cups per one ounce of lime. So we'll go ahead and fill this up to where we want it, and then we can put the lime in it and the eggs. Okay. Let's do let's right do there. half. Let's do about halfway first, and then we'll put eggs in. We'll see how much the water comes up with all the eggs. Okay. You wanna do that? Yeah. Okay. So she's measuring it with the measuring cup. All the way up here. Um, where are the cups at? How many cups yeah. is that? Okay. So it's four cups to one quart. So we need two of these. We'll start with two of those. Yep. And work our way. You can turn the water up if you need to. That's good. Okay. Ooh. Okay, there you go. Put it in. The jar smells like pickles. So that's, we got to remember that's one quart and we got to do one ounce of wine for every one quart. All right, we'll get this filled up and then we'll come back and we'll put an eggs in. Eight cups mm -hmm. equals two quarts. So we're going to need two ounces of lime, but first, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and let Hopi start filling this up with eggs. Which eggs do we get today, the black ones? Yeah. Start with these ones, and um, once it gets to a certain level, we'll see if we need to add more water, then we'll put our lime in there. You got smaller hands than me, so you- What no, if it drops? Go, yeah, you set it all the way down. You want that little black stool to sit on? No, it's Stand up on. If they got anything, anything on like that, we'll just put them to the side, okay? Okay. We're, we're pickling eggs, because it's a pickle jar. Yeah. So you can see how much the water is coming up. The eggs look big. Look right yeah. here. Looks big. 
So this is a super fun, easy project you guys could do with your kids or grandkids. Or cousins. So the water's coming up pretty good. So this is going to be interesting to see. Now if we pour any out, we'll just measure how much we pour out as far as water goes. And then we'll know how much lime to put in. So I guess we could have put lime in with water and then poured it out. But is this one good or set, set it to the side? Well, we'll say on lime by doing it this way. This one's set to the side. Yep. You can see some of them got a little stuff on them, but I think we could probably brush them off and they'll still be good. I don't know why you probably could just throw some dirty ones in there too. I guess I don't know. I don't know. These. Really yeah, we'll be able to dust them off. Some of them just have um, dots on them. That one's good. Okay. So we'll get this filled up, and then when we get back, we'll show you what we did. Okay, got. so what we did is actually um, pour the water out and went ahead and mixed the lime with the water, then poured it back in. We ended up using um, seven cups, so it was right under two quarts of uh, water, and we went ahead and weighed out um, the pickling lime just to get a little bit more accurate, and this is what we got. So this is what we got right now. You want to completely fit, make sure the eggs are um, filled with water. And all this lime, when this is settled, all, all the lime will settle down to the bottom and you'll be able to see your eggs. So um, we're gonna go do some other stuff and, um, and I'll come back if I remember and show you guys what it looks like once it starts to settle. But you can see it, it's already settling down. So we got a good mixture of it and it's in there. I think it'll be good. Let me put that on there. You got it? And you can literally store these in your closet or in your bed, wherever. We'll probably end up storing them back down there, I would, I would guess that's this, where the jars are at. Is this on? Yeah, I'll check it. Okay. So I'll get everything out that I need to show you guys how we're going to do the rice. And um, this is these are things that you guys can do without any special tools. Um, and I'll show you guys that. So stay tuned. Okay, I went and purchased some um, long rice this morning. And I actually got this from Walmart. It seems to be probably the cheapest around. And um, when, you're, when you're doing long-term food storage, like rice and beans, I always just go for the cheapest stuff because in a survival situation, you don't care if it's the if it's the more expensive brand or not you just want something to eat and right now we got rice we got 100 pounds of it and we're going to start storing it we got oh and some <laughs> soy sauce i guess there's some bad stuff in this but in a survival situation you might want some soy sauce i love soy sauce so okay so we'll start taking this in putting it on the counter and i'm going to show hope's never done this before because last time i did this you weren't even born i wasn't mm -mm. I, I did hundreds of pounds years ago and um, we're going to be doing some more but, today uh, Okay, so we're just gonna set them up here for now just to get all the rice in here so I can show you guys just how easy this is and what we're doing to prepare for a situation where we might need this. All right, are you gonna grab the other ones? Yeah. Okay. So while she gets the other ones, I'm gonna go grab the Mylar bags. I'm gonna show all right, you. so Hope and I got everything set up in here to show you guys how we're gonna do long-term food storage. You guys can do this at your house right now. So I got about 100, I got 100 pounds of rice it was right at fifty-five dollars for a hundred pounds. So that's pretty. That's pretty reasonable with inflation and all that. Anyways, um, so we got the mylar bags. I got two different sizes. I actually got some smaller ones somewhere. I'm not sure where they're at. But I'm gonna show you two different sizes and two options you could do. I'm not even sure of the size of these, but we can do one of those. Which I had a bunch of them, and then here's a five-gallon bucket one. I've got some food grade. I think these are three-gallon buckets. I actually got them let's see where they say yep three and a half gallons i actually got these for the freeze-dried candy that we're going to end up doing sometime but right now for demonstration i'm going to show you guys using this and um, if we could find a five gallon bucket we'll come back in here and fill one up but what we're going to do right now is going to fill this up with rice and we're actually going to use this harvest right sealer we'll seal this for us and we've got some of the, the oxygen absorbers we're going to use to keep the uh, air out so the first thing I like to do is I'm going to have Hope Right white rice, okay. today's date, and the ratio. So two cups water to one cup of rice. That way anyone who, I might not be around and they need this, they'll know about the rice, what date it's been in here, and how to actually prepare it as far as water and rice. One cup to uh, two cups. So I would put white, good, put it down like right here, white rice. And then you can put the, um, today's date right beside it. Okay. okay. And then put put one. Hold on. Put one cup of rice, two cups water. One cup. Okay. 
And then right below it, put two cups water. So I like to do it a little below the tear off line because we'll seal it up here. And then whenever we go to use it, you could tear it off and you'll still have everything that's on there. Obviously once it's open, you know it's white rice. But if you didn't know, it takes one cup of rice to two cups of water. Now you do. Okay, let me get set up Hope and um, we'll put, it, put this in there and we'll show them how to do the first one that we're gonna do. So on these ones, you, you can, I like doing the smaller ones also because they're more realistic. Like if we don't wanna open five gallons, if we don't want to open five gallons of rice because there's only like a couple of us here, we can open these smaller ones up and um, have rice that way. And then if, if we decide, hey, we need to start using some of the old rice, we don't have to open the five gallon one up. The five gallon one would be more for emergency situations. There's a large group that we needed uh, to feed or something like that. Oh, she put little hearts on there. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, get in here, Hobie. And um, we'll, we'll put, I'll have her hold this open for me while I pour a little bit of rice in there. So on these smaller bags, we'll be able to use this sealer, but on the big bags, I'll show you what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna have you hold it. You hold it like that. And they can't drop it, the rice will go everywhere. Yeah. It's heavy. It won't. We can wait too afterwards. We can even put how much it weighs on the bag. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Ready? Yeah. If you think you're gonna drop it, I'll let you set it down. You wanna set up on the chair right bit? No. You good? Yeah. Hold on, let me fix that. No, close it up a little bit. Here. Let's wait and see what it is. Maybe we can get like a certain amount. You're fine. Get that scale put over here, Hopi. I got this. This goes over there. So that's about. Let's see here. It won't stay up. I have to hold it. So I mean, that's four and a half pounds. Let's try to get to five pounds. Here, hold this. Okay. Tell me when it goes to five. Okay. Five. No, it's not five. It's at, I just want, it's at five. Okay, so we're like we're at five pounds. Close enough. So now we know this will hold five pounds. And we could probably get a little bit more, but this this gives us room to actually use the um, sealer. And you, I'll let you write five pounds once we get it. Okay. So a lot of times, we, one thing you can do, and this is probably what we'll do on the big five gallon one, is actually get um, a shot back and you suck out as much air as you can, then put your oxygen absorbers in there. But on these little ones, we could push most of the air out and put those oxygen absorbers in. Okay, hope got a bag. So as soon as I, I'm gonna, I'll probably put two of them in there because I don't know exactly how many they take, um, but we'll put them in there. We'll use them real quick. And I'm gonna put them in this baggie that Hope got for me. So we'll go ahead and just put two in there. May one might be good enough, but just to be on the safe side. We got a bunch of them. Is that why in these jerky bags, that's why they're- mm -hmm. Takes all the oxygen out so they'll last longer. Yeah. So that's all we're doing right here. I'm gonna push all the air up. And I can write five pounds. Mm -hmm. Pounds. Okay, yeah. what I want you to do- Close it. Just close it real quick. Right now? Yeah, close it. All the way down, push all the way down. And that sealed it. Good. Yep. So it looks like it got a good seal. Yeah. So this little bit of air that's in here should suck this back down once the oxygen is over, get all the oxygen out of there. So this looks like it is a good seal. All right, five pounds. And Hope's going to write five pounds on there. Pretty simple. Now, Hopi, we pick that bag up. And you can set it down in there. Can you set it like flat ways? We'll go flat, is there nothing? And we can stack them on top of each other. So look, we'll stack it in there like that. And this can go in a tornado shelter. Yeah, it can go in the shelter, it can go in wherever you want it. And um, so we're gonna do a few more of these. 
um, to get rid of the rice that we opened up and then we'll be back after we fill this up and show you guys. Okay, so we've done 40 pounds in five pound bags. We can fit 20 pounds in one of those three and a half gallons and I got some just sitting up here. So before I stop showing you guys this, like I said, this is a five gallon one, it's huge, right? I don't have any five gallon buckets right now, but I wanted to show you guys what you could do to seal this. So whenever I was doing it at the old house, I'd fill this up. I think it held about 35 pounds if I remember correctly. Write all my stuff on there. Put your oxygen absorbers in there and all that. Well, what I would do is I would get a two by four, put it on the ground. I do this on the ground. Get a two by four, put it on the ground, get an iron, an iron, get an iron, and um, I would seal it all the way up until about right there. Then I would get a vacuum. Um, I had a um, shop vac. I suck all the air out I could, you know, the oxygen door was in there, suck all the air I could, hold it down, and then finish sealing it off. So that's one way you guys can do it. And also another way could is by using your daughter's straightener. I've seen people actually use this. I've never used this method, um, but I've seen people do this. They will just do it just like that. All you're doing is heating that Mylar bag up to getting a good seal. So one thing to be uh, concerned about is your actual oxygen resorbers. I have resealed this. Uh, I cut it. I resealed it and put it back in here because I'm not going to be using it for a while. I think it takes like a minute for it to actually like kick in and start working. I'm not real sure. Um, but you guys can see the seal right here. Resealed it, put it in this bag just so I know I'll still have use out of it. And I got some smaller ones right here too. Got plenty of plenty of those. So don't forget, I, I forgot to put some in one of these. I had to cut open, put it back in there and then reseal it. Another thing too that you can do that I did, I didn't show you guys on camera, is that I put... If you can see, I put double seals on these. You can use one, would probably be okay, but why not put two? You can even put three if you want to. And with this Harvest Right um, sealer, it makes it so easy to do. So why not put at least two on there just to be sure. So before I quit showing you guys this, that's what um, the water glass eggs look like now. You can see all, all of the um, pickling lime has fell down to the bottom. So this should be good anywhere from a year to 16 months at least. That's one thing that I love about um, doing the, this method is that um, when you want to use them in the winter or whenever, you can still fry your eggs and all that. With the freeze drying, um, you got to scramble them up, freeze them that way, and then um, pretty much put them through a purifier and then you measure out and you can make scrambled eggs. You can still cook with them um, as far as like with um, cakes and whatever ingredients you need eggs for you can still use that just reconcentrate it and do all that um, but with the water glassing it's like just a regular egg so that's what that's what's awesome about this and you guys can do this right now that's what's so cool that any of you guys can start doing this yourself so if you guys got neighbors that got chickens and give you guys eggs or you buy eggs from them um, now you can't do this method right here with store-bought eggs because they clean them and wash them and all that and, and they have to have their natural sealant on um, the egg after they're laid so but if, once you wash them and do all that you go you have to store them in the refrigerator but you can still we got some in the fridge right now that were real dirty that brandy cleaned off that i'm actually going to be using for the freeze dryer so that's what you can do swap them out like that uh, so yeah i hope you guys found this helpful today this little part of us doing a little bit of prepping a little bit of uh, food preservation if you guys would like to see more of this leave us some comments down below uh, so i'm done with this for right now i'm going to save these uh, this 60 pounds right here for well, I'll probably I'll probably end up doing one more, and then the other two forty the forty pounds over here do in some five gallon buckets with those. And um, yeah, so that's gonna be pretty pretty good for a long time. So one more thing before I get off of this part is that what's cool about doing the five pound ones, this would be easy bartering. So you can actually trade your neighbors, friends, whatever for five pounds of rice for some fresh eggs or whatever you know fruit, whatever you want. Five gallons you can still barter, but you're giving up a lot of food when you do that so i'm done in here i'm gonna go back outside well you can see the chickens have been foraging all day it's been nice out today they've got this all worked up all the bugs and they are doing one heck of a job with eggs so i'm expecting here in the next month or six weeks or so four to six weeks we're really going to be the egg production is really going to be stepping up and um so one thing i want to do and i talked about this a little bit before in the past is start selling some eggs once we get our stockpile of eggs built up where we feel comfortable with i'm going to start doing the freeze dried and just start selling eggs in general to um, locals around here that might need some probably people from church a lot of people from church like to farm fresh eggs 
let's see if we got any more it's been been a couple hours since we've been out here we got three more three more eggs and there's one in their lane right now so i'll leave them in there for the girls like i said we got 40 to 45 hens getting about 15 eggs a day right now and that's going to jump up um so i hope this i hope this video is helpful for some of you guys maybe a lot of you guys already knew about this stuff I've never done it, but this will give you a little boost to doing it. If you guys like seeing this type of content, let me know down in the comment section. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more of the long-term food storage and stuff. We're not going to show everything, obviously, but um, we'll show you the basics and the things that uh, have been working for us. For well, I've been doing the long-term food storage, like I said, it's back 2008 um, was when I really started getting into it. So that's been 16 years ago. So I've been been working on food storage and replenishing stuff and things like that. But yeah, if you guys like to see more of this, there's tons of videos out there. But if you guys like to see our family doing, I want to teach the girls this stuff because I really started doing this uh, before they were born, uh, right before Hayden was born. And um, kind of need to start picking that back up now that the house is where we can able to start storing things and we got places to put stuff. I may have to fill out tiny cabin full of stuff. I don't know. We'll see. We're in some... Uh, we're in some times this um this these times right now are, are gonna get crazy if you guys watched my last video um and you agree with me then you guys probably need to start getting ready too but i think this year is going to be the year it's going to be it's going to be wild i think I, I think if 2020 we thought 2020 is bad i really got a feeling i think 2024 is going to be even worse i hope not pray not and um, we'll see but be prepared be prepared um if you especially if you got little kids you're taking care of someone you're taking care of be prepared if you're a loner you probably survive a little bit longer on your own, but when you got family, take care of a wife and kids. Um, you got to take this stuff a little bit more serious, and um, just be prepared for anything you can be. And your days, your days, might be numbered. Hundred percent, we're eating you first. Yeah, eating you first. I promise you. You've already given me a lot of excuses. Right now, you're being nice all of a sudden, which I'm I'm thankful for that. But you have been in a bad mood for a while now. Okay, see you guys. Gabby, say see ya. See ya. Thanks for watching. Catch y'all next video. Look, you've been nice. You thought I turned the camera off. So, okay, look. See how his demeanor changed? You're being nice when the camera's on, but now you think I turned it off. Now you're being mean again. Now he's yelling at me. See, look at him. He's just so dang moody all the time. I don't know.